Welcome back, adventurers. <laughs> you have to laugh because if you don't laugh, you just cry. What's going on, guys? I am going to kind of start from the beginning. So, those of you who were here an hour and 15 minutes ago, I apologize. I'm going to be about to go over a bunch of stuff that I went over before. The reason I'm going to literally start from square one on tonight's flight, though, is that uh, we've been we've been performing these Wings Over New England flights presented by the Boston Virtual ARTCC. And it's a series of training flights, six VFR flights and 24 IFR flights. And as you do each one, you read a little bit of a lesson. It points you in the directions of the charts that you need. Well, we'll show you. Boston Virtual ARTCC, bvartcc.com. You go into the wings and you list of the list of flights, and it's uh, and each flight is kind of listed out here as far as what you need to do. And then if you click on each one, it gives you more detailed information. Each one builds upon the skill set of the previous. So as you go through all 24, of, I'm sorry, all 30, all six of the VFR flights and 24 of the IFR flights, each one that you do builds successively on the skills and procedures that you learned in the previous one. So by the by the end, you have a pretty good, solid grounding of the basics, at least, of understanding VFR and IFR procedure and, and reading charts and, and all of that sort of thing. Uh, the reason I'm going to kind of explain all of this again is because I've been doing this um, series as a kind of a demonstration slash tutorial vid for those within the Boston Virtual ARTCC that are considering doing these flights but want to see someone demonstrate them. So uh, many of the things that I talked about in the aborted stream from earlier this evening I'm going to reiterate because this is going to kind of stand alone on YouTube as a tutorial for what we're doing tonight which is the VFR 6. We've done VFR 1 through 5. Tonight we're going to do VFR 6 if we have time now, we'll still get onto the IFR flights, probably not more than the first one at this point. A little bit of an assume abort, because microflop, Microsoft microflop, Microsoft Flights in 2020 was definitely a microflop tonight. So we find ourselves in X-Plane 11, back in the Aeroworks DC-3, and it's, yeah, it's going to be kind of insane. Uh, I probably would ordinarily have switched back to the Beach Baron, but I don't even have my checklists for the Beach Baron anymore. I haven't flown it in months. So uh, I, I don't feel like I should fly these in a plane that I'm not familiar with. So we'll just fly it in some ancient hardware, and it'll present a couple of little inter interesting challenges, but um, but should be doable. And so here we are in the uh, AeroWorks Douglas DC-3. Let's look at the specs for this VFR-6 again. And for those of you who were with us before, uh, just bear with me as I go through again and talk about what this is. Rob Vaugiri has checked back in. James Martin's back in. Four Day For Me is here. And uh, those of you who were on earlier, again, I, I, I appreciate you. Uh, appreciate your patience. As uh, Flights in 2020 keeps updating stuff, and it gets better and better, guys, doesn't it? Anyway, topic for another stream. We, at the end of VFR-5... Found ourselves back at Nashua, New Hampshire, K-A-S-H, Wire Field, I guess it's called. I just always call it Nashua. Uh, and we're going to fly from there to Boston Logan International Airport. It is a VFR flight, and you can kind of go however you like, but the lesson for VFR 6 is to use one of the heli routes. Now, you might find yourself saying, wait a minute, it's a heli route. The, the props on these things are on the front, not on the top. Well, uh... As it says here, contrary to their name, whoops, contrary to their name, helicopter routes to Boston may be flown by fixed wing aircraft. Essentially, it's just a VFR route that any VFR aircraft can fly. And so here I've plotted on the Boston TAC chart in Sky Vector just a direct route from Nashua, New Hampshire into Boston Logan. But today we are going to actually follow the heli route called the Piker route. We're going to slip up in the upper right, you see where it says Boston Heli. Now you do have to be centered say we're in world vfr you do have to be censored kind of over boston to see that if you get wander out too far it won't be one of the options but as soon as you get centered over boston boston heli becomes one of the options so we can flip over to that the piker route is the one that they use in the example and uh, just to be consistent with the ones that i've done for vfr one through five i'm just going to stick with you can use any of these honestly um it almost makes more sense to use this one up here uh vp ham or whatever but uh uh, what is this called? The Hamps route. Uh, but just to stay consistent with the example that's on 
Boston's uh, website and their description, we're going to just go with what they've got there. So we are going to pick up the Piker route from the Weston Interchange, and you'll see that there is a GPS point called VP Pike, VP P I K, and we'll follow this uh, this route in along the Alston Interchange over the B by the BU Bridge and the Mass Avenue Bridge, and up here to where this Coast Guard station is. And again, we've got VP CGS, the Visual Point Coast Guard Station. Downwind Sim checking back in. Uh, yeah, Downwind Sim. Microsoft Flights in 2020. Uh, kind of failed us tonight, so we've switched over into uh, X plane. Uh, but we're, if we if we wanted to, if we were going to fly this in a in a in a plane that had a GPS in it, we could certainly just plot these two points, VP PIK and VP CGS, and it would you know draw it'll, it'll, it'll draw a straight line between the two. So it's not going to follow the route exactly, but it will at least give you a reference line that you can sort of follow in your GPS in your plane to uh, approximate this route. We're going to do it a different way. Obviously, we don't have a GPS in the Douglas, and we were pretending when we start try to start this with uh, our our uh, Mooney in uh, Microsoft Flights in 2020. Of course, we we simulate that as though it does not have a GPS. But the way we can kind of sort of figure out ne you know nearly where we are as far as making sure we're following the correct highway in is a radio, a 282 radio off of the Boston VOR. If you see this point here. And then you follow, see if a 27 kind of goes a little bit too far south. Remember, there's magnetic variation, so uh, north is not directly straight up on this map. You can see north kind of goes a little bit, uh, magnetic north goes a little bit to the true west slightly. But if you follow about a 280, and we did some experimentation and found out that about a 282 gets us really close to that western interchange point. And we're actually going to plot a point that's a little farther out near this, uh, near this reservoir here, whatever that reservoir is called. Uh, but we'll just, we can use Sky Vector, we'll pl plot a point off the Boston VOR, so we'll put in three letters for the VOR name, 282 for the radial, and what did we say about 025? Uh, three, three numbers for the radial, three numbers for the mileage, and, oh, uh, it, was, it was 15, I'm sorry. Because this next, this last shelf of the Bravo is at 25 miles, this inner shelf here is at 15 miles, and I think what we actually said was, we're going to pick it up probably closer to 20 miles out. Yeah, okay, kind of right there at the... Right there at that reservoir, and then that that point will know that we're following approximately that that uh, Interstate 90 inbound. Again, following that radio in... Oh, and we're going to follow it to Boston VOR, not to Boston Airport, which is slightly different. So, we again, we're following this 282. It's going to take us somewhat close to the Piker route, not exactly on the Piker route. As we f as we follow that route inbound, you know we're going to be slightly left. Of course, the course is going to be slightly right of us. So our GPS needle, I'm sorry, our VOR deviation needle is going to be pointing to the right. Yes, yes, it's going to be pointing as we're fly flying here. Let me draw that again. <laughs> I explained this so much better the first time through. As we're flying along this route, the VOR needle is going to think that we're trying to get to this route. So it's going to tell us to correct to the right because it thinks we're going to try and do this. So we're going to just understand that the needle is going to be deviated to the right and we're just going to fly like it that way. But at least if it's only slightly to the right and not fully pegged to the right, that way we'll know that we're close. We're in the ballpark here, and we're probably following the correct interstate. So that's going to be the plan there. Um, again, we do have air traffic control on Boston. Did I not reboot that by? I did. Okay, good. The great thing about these flights, these 30 flights, is that when you want to progress through them, all you have to do is get on VATSIM and check to make sure that there is air traffic control in the Boston area. we got Mr. Sheed. Uh, doing his center thing. He's probably going to be on until around 11. Uh, we got Boston Approach still on. Don't know how much longer he's staying around, but hopefully for a little while. It looks like the traffic's actually starting to dissipate a little bit. It was busier earlier. So we should be okay if we want to give this a second attempt to uh, head down from Nashua down into Boston. All right. Hmm. 
knocking on wood for day for me. Yeah, I don't know if you were one of the ones that was lurking around when we did our first attempt here earlier tonight. Uh, so, yeah, it's a little bit unusual to fly the uh, Wings Over New England flights, training flights in such a uh, vintage, complicated piece of equipment here. But I didn't want to do it in the um, in the Prop Strike Cessna 172. I wanted something with a little bit of speed. So I got, uh, got the Douglas here, but I didn't want to do it in... Uh, What was that? Yeah, so I didn't want to do it in the didn't want to do it in the prop strike 172 because you know that's a little bit too slow, but uh, I didn't want to do it in the Baron because I no longer have my checklists handy for the Baron. I would have to go back into my archived files and my backups, and again I haven't flown that Baron in months and months and months. So I think this is the best of best of all worlds here. Let's just uh, go ahead and get back into the airplane and get started. We can get the battery switch on and I've only put two hours of fuel on this thing figuring I'm only going to do this this VFR6 and maybe the IFR1 uh, so they're really not going to need too much in the way of fuel so where do we start okay master battery no smoking nav and beacon lights can come on there there and there let's get my sound back and you guys are hearing sounds I'm not okay there we go The fuel tanks can go into mains, left main there, and right main there. Cowls can go open, props can go full forward, and we'll start with the number two. We will go into mix, auto rich, magnetos, fuel pumps. Time it, clear it, and start it. All right, we got an engine, guys. The uh, oil pressure is uh, oil pressure is up and normal. Fuel pressure is artificially elevated by the electric pump, but if we switch that off and turn the generator on, it should stabilize into its normal range, and we are good. Inverter and radio master. If that if engine hadn't started, I was going to call it a night. <laughs> Uh, we did refile on on that sim. We can recheck the ATIS at Mayha or METAR rather. We don't have an ATIS here at Nashua. We'll just get a METAR observation. Uh, wind was gusty from the northeast, so we figured we're departing on runway 32. Oh, it's settled down, so there's going to be a little bit of easier departure. Uh, 3032 is the altimeter, but yeah, wind is much nicer now. 0107, so we're still probably departing 32. And uh, so uh, 3032 is the altimeter, and we know it's just over 200 feet field elevation, so we'll get that dialed in, 3032, and we'll confirm that it does read just about 200 feet, and indeed it does, so kick it. And balance stopped back in. Yeah, man, we, we uh, missed you on attempt number one, but here we are trying it again. All right, and we're on 134.7 will be our Boston approach. And hopefully, like I said, hopefully they're not too crazy busy. Boston Center, hello. Walker 584, Burlington, I fire 2, Providence. Uh, we're actually not going to call him just yet. We're going to call him when we're ready to taxi. Uh, we can go into mode Charlie and get our squawk set. 1200 is VFR in the U.S. Again, we're going to do this without flight following. So the uh, the charge here, by the way, it, again, it's, it's described in the... Uh, in the flight, but uh, route. VFR departure southeast without flight following. Radio altimeter can be set to one extra departure. And fuel quantity can be checked. Question 232, back to controls. 
Yeah, we got uh, 40 gallons in each tank, and that's really all we're going to need, I think, for about two hours of flying. All right, we'll get the uh, get the doors closed. We'll forego all the uh, announcements and stuff tonight. Just, just really show up demonstrating the flight more than more than the uh, experience, I guess I should say. Seatbelt signs can come on. We'll get the number one started. Mix. Magnetos. Fuel pump. Prime it. Clear it. And start it. Engine comes to life. Oil pressure comes up. Fuel pump off. Generator on. Temps and pressure's looking good. Talking hockey, so I'm going to let you all talk amongst yourselves. I have nothing to add to that conversation. <laughs> all right, so th about a 046 heading, it looks like. We'll make sure that, oh, this is all the way spun around. So about a 046, it looks like. Walker 548, nope, Walker 584, fly runway heading, runway 33, clear to takeoff. We'll set the, three, three, set three, the target three, heading there to zero. I, you know, again, I'll usually set the heading bug to runway heading, but uh, in this plane, it's just it's a little bit of a different setup. I don't find that it's useful to do that in this plane. 046 there, okay, so we're all set. Flight controls would be checked. Again, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll bring the yokes in. We're not really checking yoke operation. We're checking the exterior sur control surface operation. But we'll presume somebody out there has done that for us and given us a big thumbs up. And we can go ahead and set flaps one and make sure our trim is neutral. And I think we are ready. And I accidentally moved that lever last time. I did that too. Okay, tailwheel can come unlocked, and we'll get the taxi light on, and we'll call. One more time, take two, guys, for our departure out of Nashua. Center Douglas 5 by 4 Delta Victor VFR request. Uh, Douglas 5, 1 for Delta Victor. Take two. We're at Nashville. We get the weather. Looking for a VFR southeastbound departure. No flight following on the wings. It's VFR 6. Delta Victor. Wings VFR 6 appear. 3 2 3 2 via Alpha. 5 Victor. Away we go. Parking brake didn't come off. Okay, there we go. Uh, and you'll notice I go full right rudder there if you look at the pedal animation. Really, though, the rudder's not doing a darn thing for me at these speeds. So I'm really steering my brakes. It's just force of habit that I throw the rudder in as well. And this AeroWorks does simulate that... Uh, you know, rudder ineffectivity at these low speeds, so you can throw the rudder to the complete opposite side and it will not steer you if you don't have the airflow over that rudder to direct the plane's tail to move. This is a fairly narrow taxiway. This is a uh, Looks slightly different than the version we were just on on flights in 2020. I don't imagine they see a lot of DC-3s at this airport in the real world. <laughs> I was doing better from the interior view. Uh, on the taxi out, we can get the flaps, I'm sorry, the cow flaps set to trail. It's going to be hard to do while I'm trying to maintain a straight track here. 
Hydro pressure's checked. Yeah, and I know I'm ignoring the chat too, guys, but I'll be a little bit more sociable once we get this thing airborne. Oh, I did not talk about the altitude, by the way. What did I file? Okay, I did file 3,500. So I didn't talk about altitude. We filed 3,500. As we progress eastbound, we may do that. While we're still kind of slightly west of south, we'll be at 3,000. Below, th below 3,000, you don't really need to pay attention to the eastbound odd altitude plus five, westbound even altitude plus five. So we'll probably just cap it off one four zero join Victor two twenty nine worker cover for Office Hunter. Well, I'll show you. Let me show you. We're gonna we're gonna do a run up and I'll show you real quick the altitude plan here. So as we depart here we need to uh, we need to stay below twenty five hundred in order to stay below the outer shelf of the Manchester Charlie. Once we get clear of Nashua's Delta and we're west and we're outside of Charlie, we can kind of head southbound. We'll go to either 3,000 or 3,500, depending on whether we are, you know, eastbound or westbound at that point. When we get down here to the point where we're intercepting Interstate 90, you know, this, this outer shelf goes to 15 miles out from Boston, starts at 4,000 feet. So we're actually good. Is that 15 miles or 20 miles? That's 20 miles. So within... If you're at 4,000 or higher, you got to stay 20 miles away from Boston VOR unless you get a Bravo clearance. If you're 15 miles, which is this next ring in, you got to be a, uh, above three, I mean, so below 3,000. So if we're at 3,500, we can get as close in as 15 miles. See where it says Boston 15 miles there where we have to have a Bravo clearance. So we can get into where this uh, this framing of shopping center is and uh, before we get our Bravo clearance. So Stream Hero is with us. Thank you very much, Stream Hero. Boston Center, 776 with you. 10,000 car at Warport. All right. Boston Center, good evening. Maintain 250 knots and I'll have higher for you shortly. Let's get in position. We're going to do, we are going to do a quick run up. So we'll pull up, hold short line here. We'll set uh, 30 on the manifold pressure. On the prop levers down three times. Once. Twice. And three times. Okay, we'll check the left magneto down to one set. Down to the second set. You can hear the engines go slightly out of sync, but not too bad. Back in sync now that all magnetos are on. Right engine down to one set. Right engine down to the other set. And back. Okay, there we are. We're ready. We're ready. Now this time we're going to see if we can request a left downwind departure. Center Douglas 514 Delta Victor short of 32 at Nashua ready requesting left downwind. Air 514 Delta Victor left turn out approved, runway 32, clear for takeoff. And clear for takeoff 32, left turn out approved, 514 Delta Victor. Okay, so last time he didn't give us a, a specific pattern entry and we felt that uh, absent any other instructions we were kind of supposed to go straight out. So this, this time he's given us a left turn out approved so we can kind of directly head south. Uh, Anti-collision lights, landing lights on, taxi light off, pitot heat on, and fuel pumps on. Temps and pressures all look good. We'll get lined up, we'll get the tailwheel locked. See George is with us, thank you very much for stopping in, see George. 
right, we're lined up. Get the tailwheel, tailwheel lock on, and we'll set our takeoff power. 45 on the manifold pressure coming at you. Here we go. Steer with a little bit of brakes until we get the tail up. Okay, there we go. Now we can steer with the rudder. And keep the plane level and lift gently off the runway. We got uh, wheels coming up. Keep the uh, nose down and airspeed build up. Once we get through 400, we get the flaps in. There's about 400. We were at 200, uh, yeah, 200 BC level on the ground, so we'll be through six. There's 400. Flaps can come in. Start that left turn out. Keeping the nose down, keeping the airspeed building. We'll turn to uh, basically to a southbound Once we're clear of the delta, he may give us a frequency change, but he also might not. Sometimes leaving a delta, you really just you take off clearance, you leave the airspace, and you just kind of peace out. <laughs> we didn't ask for flight following, so it doesn't have to pass this along to anybody for flight following. So that's good. I hear a Kenny. 25 and 40 for the climb. And kind of, uh... Oh, you know what I didn't do, though? You know what I didn't do? I didn't. Dial in that Boston Radial 282. What is that? 112.7 and 282 on the radial. So let's do that. 112.7 and 282. And that's 102, by the way, going inbound. So there's a 102. We're 33 miles from that Boston VOR. So again, as long as we're beyond 20 miles, our altitude's our discretion. We want to be at least 3,000 so that we don't accidentally run over any of these little delta air spaces along the way. Deltas typically go up to 2,500 feet above ground level. So we'll just make sure we're tracking basically southbound from Nashua. And then at the point where we see that radial start to come in, we'll know that we should be looking for that Interstate 90. Now, it's not going to be quite as discernible, I don't think, in this sim versus Flight Sim 2020, but we do have Ortho 4XP installed throughout this, this area. So it might not look quite as nice and, and populated with 3D buildings all the way throughout, but it should look pretty close. So 25, let's make sure we keep 40. We're going to level it out at 3,000. Yeah, I'm, miss, I'm missing a lot in the chat, guys. I apologize. As soon as we get kind of leveled out at 3,000 and stable on our southbound heading, we'll start kind of figuring out where we are navigation-wise. We no longer need to, we're, we're well outside of that delta now. That delta only goes four miles from the airport. So we're well outside of that delta. We can go ahead and just start monitoring the approach control frequency, which is according to X-Pilot is 133.0. Uh, so 33.0, we'll get that dialed in. And we'll be ready to ask for our Bravo clearance once we are down and uh, kind of along that Interstate 90. All right, let's let's uh, let's see if I can catch up with chat messages now. Oh, we're 3,500. Let's get back. 
Now, if we're going to be slightly, slightly east of, of southbound, 3,500 is fine. We'll go ahead and level it out there. So then we'll go to uh, 23 and 34. Oh, and post departure, we can get fuel pumps off also. Cows can go into uh, cows can go into closed. Leave them a little bit open just for some, just for a little bit of cooling. But yeah, about a 175. That ought to get us down there, okay. Again, we'll watch the DME. As long as we're not any closer in than 15 miles, then uh, we're okay to be at 3,500 feet. So there we go. Get it, get it settled in at... Uh, Twenty-three and thirty-four. Thirty-five hundred feet. About a one seven five to one eight zero heading. So we were, we're talking about the stream lagging. Yeah. So fortunately. <laughs> Fortunately, now that we're not on Microsoft Flight Sim 2020's extended seven-month alpha, we're uh, we're good here. Everything on my end is looking good performance-wise. So hopefully, you all are seeing uh, seeing uh, the stream decently there. Yeah, worry. Yeah. So when they leave, when you leave the Delta VFR, it's just kind of like mm. elbow, elbow, wrist, wrist, like you said. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Redneck Love and Life is checked back in. We got a couple of you looking for some of those raffle tickets for our monthly raffle. Yeah, I'll get to those probably once we get on the ground at Boston. I'm hand flying this all the way through. Fairing fans is with us. Says in Hong Kong, you got to wear the mask even inside your bedroom, or else the public will criticize you. Good gracious. Yeah, I mean every culture has its pros and cons, but that strictness. Is is one that uh, surely, surely as an American I can't relate to. I mean, you know, in, in the U.S. it's like there are, are a lot of uh, areas of the U.S. where even being told to wear a mask in a private business is met with resistance. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to talk politics too much, but I will say that a, a close friend of mine just came down with COVID and uh, it's a uh, it's it's scary hopefully I mean he says he's, he's getting through it okay so far but it's Bob scary <laughs> or he says stand at the window naked with just the mask and find that says you choose where it goes <laughs> there's the American defiance for you <laughs> All right, let's see if we can kind of correlate our position here. Again, we know we, we've, we've got a, a number of little lakes and stuff here. We're still 21 miles outside of the Boston VOR. That means we're still outside. We can switch over to the TAC chart now, yeah. So we're still outside this room. We're just barely outside this ring. So we might be coming like right up on this uh, framing him. So we kind of don't want to go too... We definitely don't want to be within 15 miles, because within 15 miles, we're violating the Bravo at 3,500. 20 miles, we're okay. We're five miles outside of that ring that starts at 3,000. So again, just to... If I can... Hand fly this. Keep a steady altitude. Boston approach, November 177, Kilo Mike, passing 8,500 for 7,000, and it wants to... So yeah, on this this ring here that starts at 20 miles, we can be within that as long as we're below 4,000. This ring here is at 15 miles, and we can be within that as long as we're not below, I mean, not above 3,000. But at 3,500, this is the boundary that we have to watch if we're at 35. So again, it's 4,000. But then past that second line, it's 3,000. So 
there we are, level, level at 35. Hunter sounds like good fixings maybe has stopped in. Okay, so it's 18 miles. Let's let's turn outbound a little bit. Let's turn outbound, and again, so we're we're now going to be kind of west west of south. So we're going to descend to 3,000, just so we're not in violation of the eastbound VFR altitude thing. So we'll pick up a little speed. I can pull the throttle back just a touch here. Just so we don't pick up too much airspeed in our gentle descent. And our VOR radio has not quite started coming in yet. Looks like it's still fully pegged. But it does look like we're coming up on that, uh, that reservoir there by... Uh, yeah, so we might be right here near that Framingham Shopping Center and that, that, uh, um, yeah, one of those might be the Framingham Shopping Center. And we can see the radio is now coming in. So this is going to be the correct Check interstate to follow. So let's level it out at 3,000. Let's go ahead and call. Say 17 miles west at 3,000. Inbound via be, be, uh, the Piker route for uh, full stop. Boston approach, Douglas 514 Delta Victor, VFR request. Douglas 514 Delta Victor is uh, 18 miles west of the VOR over the Framingham Shopping Center 3000, looking to, to uh, proceed inbound via the Piker route for uh, full stop in Boston. Three four one four five and four Delta Victor. Three four one four. And let's not lose sight of that interstate. <laughs> All right, 2,500 and cleared under the Bravo via the Piker route, expecting 33 left, 5 and 4 Delta Victor. All right, so now we're going to, now we're definitely going to pull the uh, throttle out. General descent down to 2,500. I'm going to be bold and hand fly this sucker. Now look at that needle's fully deviated to the left now, so I'm I'm much further right than I expect it to be. Let's make sure we're following the correct interstate. Okay, so this is probably the interstate here. So down at that interstate, it is, it is south of the uh, of the 282 radial that we that we dialed in. So this is probably okay. Uh, Boston departures, uh, All right, so level now 2,500. Let's get the uh, throttle back in. 23 and 34. There we go. Okay, let's do our best now to see if we can track this Interstate 90 in. It's going to go... Well, there's downtown Boston, so <laughs> worst case, we kind of head that way. On that 282. That's, that's a pretty substantial interstate there. 
Okay, does look like it kind of dips to the left, right, left, and then the right. So this is this is the one we're following, guys. It's a little hard to see. Those downwind sim binoculars do help, but that's the interstate that we're following. Uh, let's get back down to 2,500. Alright, the other thing that we're going to do once we get back down to 2500 is we are going to start briefing a 3 3 left. Or, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. What did he say? Yeah, 3 3. 3-3 three, three left, I'm pretty sure is what he said. We got an ILS there. And it's 110.7 and 330. Okay, so let's get the altitude fixed here. Alright, 3030, and uh, upon arrival at the airport, when we're left down, we're 33 left, 5 for Delta Victor. So 110.7 and 330. We, obviously, we've got this highway, and we can see that it goes straight into downtown, so we don't need the uh, VOR radio anymore. We'll go ahead and tune. Yeah, we're not really flying an ILS, but it sure, sure does help to have that uh, that guidance. 110.7 and 330. 8817.35, contact Boston Center 134.7. Uh, United 735, contact Boston Center, 134.7. Let's keep it at 25. Approach number 61 Delta Delta, we have disconnected out of here. Number 61 Delta Delta, bring you 5 by 5 and uh, squawk, let's stand by. So it looks like once we get in here, one twenty eight eight five one four Delta Victor. So at this point, we follow the river up and over the downtown area, and then we enter that left downwind. Airport should be kind of ahead and to the left here. Yeah, gorge gorgeous, gorgeous view. 28.8, Boston Ground is 121.9. Eighth. A little bit hard to see out the right. Let's kind of make sure we're. Twenty-eight eight. Still at twenty-five hundred or thereabouts. Going around the downtown area. Okay, there's the GA runway, runway fourteen and thirty-two. So now we're entering basically a left downwind for 3-3 three, three left. Boston Tower, Douglas 514 Delta Victors, uh, just coming off of the Piker route for a left downwind, 3-3 three, three left. Number 514 Delta Victor, Boston Tower, enter left downwind, runway 32 and 3-2 for your land. Okay, uh, now to uh, runway 32 instead, Douglas 514 Delta Victor, a left downwind and clear the land. Okay. Let's 
run through the arrival checklist real quick. Mix is already auto rich. Cows can go back into trail. Tailwheel is locked. Fuel pumps can come back on. We'll start to increase the prop speed. As soon as we get down below 100, there we go, 120 rather, we'll go flaps 1. Get to 100, we'll go flaps 2 in gear. Kind of lost sight of it there, but basically know where it is. Field elevation is next to nothing, it's essentially sea level. Knots, we go flaps three. You guys can start putting in some predictions, it landing seems. rates, just a vertical descent rate. At the moment, the wheels touch. A positive or negative number can go into the uh, chat. No bot command is necessary. Still, probably a little bit high on this left downwind to base. for 75 down final and uh, 70 over the numbers. I'm hoping, Rob Vockier, that that was a helicopter rendering as an airliner, because he was awfully low. And was passing right below us. So that was kind of interesting. <laughs> uh, I was still very left the center line here. Now, then ignore the... Uh, Ignore the ILS. The ILS is for is, is guiding us to 3-3 three, three left, which is that one over there. We're actually headed to 3-2, which is uh, kind of behind this pedestal right now. Boston Tower, November 177, Kilo Mike on final for 3-3 three, three left. November 177, Kilo Mike, Boston Tower, running 3 one thing that will be interesting is to look at the ground track and see how close we were to uh, following that route. I don't know if it, the ground track on X-Plane may not show that Piker route necessarily, but it should show the, show the interstate and then of course we'll show the river. So we'll see how well we were directly over top of it. Alright, aiming for 75 down final, 70 over the numbers, looks like I'm a little bit high. Still got a good right to left crosswind. So 
we're definitely going to come in with a right wing low. And I'm still not correcting enough for it. Got it kind of stable. We'll see. Eighteen, I'll take that. Get that yoke down, get that tail down, keep it down. Still the flaps. Alright, there we go. See if I can get zoomed in here and get the taxiway letters in front of me. Uh, join Juliet, short a kilo, and monitor ground 504 Delta Victor. Boston Tower, good afternoon, dude. Uh, Citation number 61 Delta Delta on the uh, left, from which you left. 61 Delta Delta, Boston Tower, number two following a TBM on a two mile final, wind 33, person wind 3, fighter 1, four guys 2, 3. 18, yeah, man, we were pretty happy with that. Ground uh, 121.9. Ground Delta 4211. Delta 4211. The anti-collision yep. landing taxi. Pito. Uh, Fuel pumps. And uh, whoops, open the cow flaps. And are we going to go all the way up to the north end for GA? That's call you, 514 Delta Victor. 514 Delta Victor, Boston Girl, welcome to Boston. Taxi to signature via Juliet and Bravo. Hold short of taxiway, Charlie. All right, Juliet and Bravo, and then uh, short of Charlie, 514 Delta Victor. Okay, Boston Girl, Delta 9960, we're ready to push. Uh, so we're going all the way north. Delta 9960, Boston Girl, push back on to Echo approved. Five, this frequency ready for taxi. I'm confused. Uh, so I think we got to get over this way. Let's see what the signage says here. Did we pass VFR-60? Hasn't told us yet. And I presume it's going to be, can we get to uh, Signature without violating his taxi instructions? Okay, so there's, now we're north on Bravo. And there's Echo. And uh, so we got to make sure we hold short, Charlie. Hey, boss, Charlie, I was going to say, Charlie should be where he's turning off. Charlie, cross runway 4 left and hold short runway 4 right. Alright, 
Left on Charlie and then Alpha into the ramp, 5 for Delta Victor. Air France, triple three, heavy on Charlie, cross runway 4 right, hold short runway 27 on Okay, Charlie. so there's another one coming straight so down Charlie right, for us. Charlie. So we're going to duck over to the left to take Alpha the rest of the way up. November 177, Kilo Mike on Foxtrot, we lost tower. Uh, that's okay. November 177, Kilo Mike on Foxtrot, you can cross a runway 4 left, give way to a, looks like a DC-3. Yep, that's what we look like. Cross four left, we'll give way to traffic and alpha to the ramp, seven kilo mic. Loud and proud DC three. Delta ninety nine sixty five to ground, runway three three left, taxi via Echo, Bravo, Charlie, cross runway four left and hold short runway four right. Now the funny thing is about uh the funny thing is about passing VFR-6 is I have technically passed all of these before. Now, they have added a handful to the IFR flights that I will, in fact, need them to enter my passage for once we get to that point. But VFR-1 through 6 and I think 20 out of the 24 IFR flights have actually technically already passed. Air France, triple three, heavy on Charlie, cross runway 2. It says, uh, and I quote, looks like a DC-3. Well, I hope it doesn't look like a duck. <laughs> Well, good fixings. If it walks like a DC-3 and it quacks like a DC-3, I guess it's a DC-3. <laughs> it does kind of waddle. Well, when, when, in this crosswind, when I'm riding the brakes the way I am, yeah, it surely does. <laughs> S taxi, yeah. So uh, a lot of tail draggers, tail dragger pilots will zigzag back and forth along the taxiway just so they can see ahead. I'm not doing that so much as because I'm fighting with the crosswind. <laughs> it's the FBO in New Hampshire, yeah, pretty much, almost. We're pretty much going to taxi back to Nashua here. <laughs> We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. Alpha all the way around, and then, uh... November 514 Delta Victor, you're just going to follow Alpha all the way to the end. So I'd be at the GA room. Works for me, 514 Delta Victor. Just fighting the crosswind a little bit. Off whiskey, give way to uh, A320. You'll be turning on to uh, Charlie from Alpha, uh, from Bravo. We'll go away to the 320, uh, 3 cents work off whiskey. Alright. Across the ground, Delta Delta's, uh, just All the way out to the end of Alpha, and then we'll find ourselves a parking spot. Let's ask them. It's a, it's quarter after 10 now. I know she typically is on till 11. I don't, don't know how late this uh, approach controller is going to be that we were talking to, how late he's going to be on. And we'll, we'll just ask them if they think they're going to be able to accommodate IFR1 before they close up shop for the night. I don't know if if they will or not. Uh, we do need a, a few minutes to kind of review it as well. So if, if we're going to do it, I'll have to have a few minutes to kind of show you what it is and what it entails and get all the uh, pertinent charts up in front of us as well. So we'll see. We'll see how uh, what they say as far as how much longer they're going to be on. So it's going to be Echo, Bravo, Charlie, cross four left, and hold short four right. Echo, Bravo, uh, Charlie, uh, hold, uh, cross four left, and hold short four right. Yeah, four left, we'll hold short four, uh, the other one. <laughs> we'll hold short of something. If we, if we see something out there, we'll hold short of it. <laughs> All right. Uh, November 364, work off with key. Uh, the traffic's out of your way, so you can uh, keep the speed up. I think this will work now. Keep speed up, 364, work off with key. 
Alright, parking brake can come on. Taxi light can come off. Let's uh, do a real quick spin through. Yeah, the. Kind of running out of fuel. <laughs> kind of running out of fuel, guys. Alright, let's uh, stop back up here. 135 predictions, 118 for day, I think nailed it. 99 set down, Winsim, 125 OBFG, 120 James Martin, that's a very good guess too. Normally when we do these uh, guess the landing rate competitions, guys, we'll do two rounds, we'll give you 500 points minus the difference. So James Martin, even though you wouldn't have won that round, you would have been only two points behind, so that would uh, still have been a very, very good guess there. Um, so that's how we do those if you haven't been in one of those before. Uh, the my shoes didn't have as much faith uh, because of the, the, the gusty winds. Yeah, that, that crosswind was no joke. 156 at Ori. Cross runway 4 right and hold short runway 27 on Charlie. I will cross 4 right and hold short uh, 27 on Charlie. <laughs> yeah, very good. Uh, Anti-collision balance is the, um, is the is basically the strobe light. Um, let's let's look real quick and just see what our ground track looked like all the way in. Hey, Boston ground, Delta twenty three ninety three. My kind of a weird request, but can you amend my flight plan for me? So uh, I guess we don't have. Refile what you need. I resubmitted it. It just corrected back to what it was before. Uh, what did you need me to correct? No, yeah, we don't have six, the the, the roads, so we can't quite see. Then, uh, but if we look though at one, three, three point zero. the If we look. Delta 2393, what did you need to correct? Uh, the arrival into. change from Wiggle 2 to Feral 2. And uh, I get to tell you right now that you're going to need to reroute anyway. Uh, stand by, I'll send you a route. Yeah, that's not too bad, I don't right. think. I mean, it's got definitely got the same shape, right? comes in, stays to the north, it dips back down, and then it comes up and over the river. And I think that's kind of what we did. Up, down, and then up and over the river. I, I would say that's a success, guys. I mean, the altitude, altitude control wasn't perfect. A couple hundred feet low and high. But overall, I'm happy with that. And yeah, we did kind of a long, extended uh, downwind and base. But that's because we were at 2,500 on the downwind. We had a lot of altitude to lose. But yeah, I think I think that's a success. Let's see. How, I mean, we we cut the corner a little bit over the buildings there, but uh, I don't think that was too bad. Let me back up. Uh, how did you get the ATC on X plane? Because I don't have the real. It's VATSIM, uh, King Brand. It's the VATSIM network. So we run uh, we run the VATSIM network through this app here called X Pilot. And given that crosswind, the approach was pretty straight. Yeah, it it was a little bobbly, but uh, I think we did okay. Let's ask them real quick if they're going to be on long enough for the IFR one, and if we uh, if they are, then we can. Uh, We'll, we'll, do, we'll do another flight, and if they're not, then I think we'll just wrap it up. Boston Ground, Douglas 5 and Fort Delta Victor. November 5 and Fort Delta Victor, uh, you did pass your wings, and I made the entry for you. Oh, very good. I was just checking to see if everyone's going to be on long enough for us to do IFR 1 also. One second, Delta 4211 on Charlie, cross runway 27, in contact, departure 133.0. 33, the outside. Uh, yeah, like I said, the one flag. one criticism of myself that I have was the al altitude uh, adherence. Uh, let's see, November 1431, Bravo, wings IFR1 is unapproved. 
this moment. Uh, I can uh, give me one second. That uh, wasn't. Yeah. Uh, I guess apparently he was asking as well. So yeah, if if, if they're getting ready to uh, to close up shop, I know I know Sheed said he was going to be on until 11, so that's only another 35 minutes. And then, uh, but I think for for IFR one, we might only need approach. Let's look at the IFR one just in case, guys. Again, it's the wings, Boston Virtual AR two CC wings flights. Let's look at wings IFR1. This is pretty straightforward. It's Boston to Boston. Depart and arrive Boston. Standard instrument departure and an ILS approach. Proper compliance with the Logan. And uh, flying the ILS approach successfully. You know, again, you guys can look through the specifics of this as well. So obtaining an IFR clearance, this is new information for most. We, you know, we've, we've kind of, on this channel, we kind of know that stuff there, so that's not a big deal. Your wings, IFR-1 is approved. Uh, let's see. You're cleared to the Boston Airport via the Logan 2 departure radar vector direct. Maintain 3000. Departure frequency. Yeah, so one, we'll pull up three, the Logan. Point zero. Squawk 1327. Yeah, it sounds like, sounds like we might be able to do it. So, all right, let's, let's. Let's get ready. First of all, I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna add a little fuel in while we're down here. Okay. Let's get our pile plan here. The IFR. And November Foxtrot Tango Whiskey Niner Boston Ground. What was your Two forty-five on routes thirty. Fuel available to just requesting for taxi to runway two two left for uh, flight plan that's not uh, departing to the south. Let's go. November Foxtrot Tango Whiskey Niner, you're cleared out of the Boston class Bravo airspace at three thousand. Departure frequency one three three point zero. Let's go Logan nine. Oh, I'm sorry, Logan three, two three, now. One thirteen thirty one, and you said you're headed south. So Logan two. Very complex, depending on which runway you get. This is one where I say you definitely don't want to just dial in runway heading and fly out runway heading until oblivion. Depending on which, which runway they launch you off of, it's runway heading in that direction. It's runway heading in that direction, but only to 2.2 DME. It's 330, it's runway heading in that direction, but only until 2 DME. It's runway heading in that direction, but only until 1 DME. It's 035 in that direction, but only until 4 DME. So, you really need to look at this and make sure you follow the instructions for the runway that you're launching off of. So, Boston to Boston. We're going to call it the Logan 2. And IFR one. It's going to be cross four left, and then hold short of the next runway four. I think it's going to be three thousand. Correction. Yep, I see it now. Taxi Bravo. Yeah, props is three thousand. Cross runway four left. Hold short four. JetBlue three fifty five Boston ground. Boston ground. JetBlue three fifty five holding short of runway four. All right. Okay, to cross. JetBlue 355, Boston Ground, welcome to Boston on Fox Run. Cross runway 4 left and taxi to the Charlie Terminal via straight ahead on Fox Run. Straight ahead on Fox Shot, JetBlue 355. Alright, let's see if we can do it, guys. Ground over 1431, Bravo, ready to taxi. November 1431, Bravo, Boston Ground, runway 33 left, taxi via Bravo, Charlie, cross runway 4 left and hold short runway 4 right. Taxi runway 33 left, Bravo Charlie, cross 4 left, hold short 4 right, 3 1 row. South Air Charter 2590, Boston Ground. Are you okay? Ground Solaris 2590, <laughs> um, I see I'm on 
think I'm on November, request taxi to the uh, GA ramp. And South Air Charter 2590 taxi. Corey says you're going to shoot this as a slant whiskey. Well, slant alpha. alpha. It'll, be, it'll be whiskey without the RBSM, so yeah, we're going to do it radio now. Yeah, we got Kenny on the frequency, that's for sure. Uh, we do want to... For the Logan... You know, we do want to have 112.7 tuned in, so we'll get that tuned back in. Ground Douglas 514 Delta Victor, uh, IFR to Boston for the IFR 1. And November 514 Delta Victor, standby clearance is our request. And we'll call in with information Foxtrot 35014 gusting 23. 3031. Clear to the Boston Airport via the Logan 2 departure. Radar vector is direct. Maintain 3000. Departure frequency 133.0. Squawk 1334. All right, clear to the Boston Airport. Uh, Boston Logan 2 departure direct. Maintain 3000, departure 133.0 and 1334, 504 Delta Victor. Solaris 2590, make a next left turn on Alpha 1, November 1431, Bravo, give way to the uh, aircraft on taxiway, Bravo. Yes. To the whatever Kenny's flying today, uh, the Tucano or the. And a left turn on Alpha 1 and then Alpha to the ramp. <laughs> and then Alpha to the ramp, Solaris 2590. November 514 Delta Victor, your rebound is correct. Divide this frequency, ready for taxi. Expect 33 left. Expect 33 left, we are running now, 5 for Delta Victor. And November 514 Delta Victor, runway 33 left, taxi via Bravo, Charlie. Cross runway 4 left and hold short runway 4 right. Alright, 33 uh, three left, Bravo, Charlie, short of 4 left, correction. Cross 4 left, short of 4 right, 5 for Delta Victor. All right, so Bravo, Charlie, cross four left, short of four right. Requesting taxi, two to three left. Golf is here, Alpha Boston Ground, runway three three left, taxi via Bravo, I can break off. Charlie, cross runway four left, and taxi light on. Away we go. Darkwind is asking, what's the difference between Slant Alpha and Slant Whiskey? Uh, RVSM, which is Reduced Vertical Separation Minima Airspace. So if you're capable of flying between flight level 290 and flight level 410, you're going to be Slant Whiskey. If you're not capable of flight level 290, you're Slant Alpha. Now, in the real world, there's some different requirements for RVSM. On VATSIM, we simplify it. If you're capable of achieving that uh, uh, achieving that altitude, then you just kind of consider uh, RVSM capable. I will give way to the 737 on 4 left, 5 for the. November 1431, Bravo on Charlie, cross runway 4 right, hold short runway 27 on Charlie. Okay, so as we make the bend here, we're going to be at Quebec. Yeah, we're dark and we're slant alpha because we are. Uh, non RNAV and non RVSM, but we do have VOR with DME. Delta 478, uh, uh, we actually, Ori, we've got a tutorial on the uh, playlist, the YouTube playlists. It's only about a seven and a half minute one. Delta 2393, have you pushed back your discretion? Advise holding short of Kilo, ready for taxi. 
Let's just hold short November here. November 514, Delta Victor, give way to the 737 who just cut in front of you on November. Uh, we'll give way to the American 54 Delta Victor. American 2262, Boston Ground. American 262, Boston Ground. Yeah, sounds like he wasn't supposed to. Sounds like he wasn't supposed to do that. It's okay. We'll, we'll slip past. No problem, American 262. You can taxi to the terminal of the street ahead on Alpha there. I think that other traffic we were supposed to hold short for came off of Quebec. No problem, and I think that other traffic coming off of Quebec is probably long gone, right? Uh, affirmative. Okay, no problem, thanks. Boston Ground, November 33, Delta Whiskey, looking for clearance to uh, Toronto. Just wanted to make sure there wasn't somebody else we're supposed to hold for. Delta Whiskey, that might clear our request number two. Okay, so there's... Uh, there's Quebec, and then we get down to Foxtrot, and then the next one should be Charlie. Now we can cross four left, he said, and then we'll hold short four right. Um, anyway, yeah, so on the YouTube channel there, links on the lower left-hand side of your screen, there's a uh, playlist called Tutorials, and it's a, it's a fairly sh uh, short and straightforward one as my tutorials go. But uh, goes through the seven main um, suffixes that you see on the Vatsim network. But yeah, pretty much if you're if you're if you're Arnav, you're either Golf or Lima. If you're Arv, if you're non Arnav, you're either you're Alpha or Whiskey. And the difference between one and the other is that if you're Lima or if you're Whiskey. You're RVSM capable, so you're capable of flying flight level 290 or higher. If you're Alpha or Golf, you're non-RVSM, meaning that you're limited to below flight level 290. And again, real world, there's a little bit more complexity to... Alright, cross 4 right, short of 27, Charlie 5, for Delta Victor. So there's a little bit more real world complexity to RVSM airspace. I think it's it's that you have to have a redundant pitot and static system with uh, you know with separate altitude indicators, and you have to have an uh, autopilot that's capable of flying an altitude hold. I think those are the main uh, those are the main ones. There's probably one or two more that I'm forgetting. somebody like right on our tail <laughs> November 514 Delta oh, Victor on Charlie cross 27 and contact departure 133.0 alright cross 27 departure on the other side 514 Delta Victor yeah so the crew has to be certified as well yeah good fixes that's a good point And, and it's actually possible to be in a non-RVSM aircraft and get cleared through RVSM to cruise above RVSM. That's the other weird thing. Um, but on VATSIM, you wouldn't see that a whole lot. So Charlie kind of bends to the right here. So a fork in the road. If you see a fork in the road, you take it. Alright, we need to look at this Logan 2 again. We're departing. Golf Sierra Alpha on Charlie Cross Runway 27 and contact departure. Departing on 33 left. We need to re remember what our instructions are. Cross T7 contact departure. November 338 Delta Whiskey 
Nothing. Climb maintain two thousand three one rub. Logan. Three three left. It is the one where we go three three zero until two DME and then three one six. Departure Douglas five one four Delta Victor's rolling up on three three left at Logan, ready to go. I will hold short for those landing traffic, 5 for another victory. Good evening, Boston Approach, uh, American 910, following the J-Fund 2 down. American 910, Boston Approach, good evening, the Boston Center, 3031, expect the ILS from... Three mile final, come on, I could have made it. 3031 on the L. Of course, if he's a jet, then, uh... And he had to go around, he would have run me over, so, okay, alright, uh, alright, uh, fair enough. <laughs> okay, so there we are. Again, this is the set of instructions that we're following. Okay, we're departing this one here. So that means we're 330. And then this arc here is 2 DME. And then we're automatically got to turn left to a 316. So while we're sitting here, we got a minute. Let's make sure our, our headings are synced up. I was doing this a little bit. You, you might have caught me doing it a little bit as we were uh, pulling up here. So it looks like a 092 or thereabouts, maybe a 093. Get all those in, in sync there. And 300 to 2 DME, and then, okay, there's our line of traffic. Yeah, Logan is a, a radar vector departure, so uh, it's pretty much vectors to your first point um, after that turn. So you'll, you'll see, actually, if I can get this continuation page up. Bear with me. And I keep saying Logan 9, that's Delta actually... 5-4 Delta Victor, runway 33 left, line up and wait. 3-3 uh, three, three left, line up and wait, 5-4 Delta Victor. All right, I got the continuation page up, but uh, I got an airplane to move here for a second. Anti-collision. Uh, landing lights typically come on once you get takeoff clearance. I'll just do it now because I'm a, a one-person crew. Left off of three three left and then ground point nine. Unit twelve twenty three. See. as best as we can. Looks like we do still have traffic downfield. Tailwind locks on. Alright, 3 3 left, clear for takeoff and 2 7 0, 5 4 Delta Victor. Alright, so now that negates the uh, that negates the whole procedure. <laughs> But I'll show you anyway, just because if you do this IFR Wings 1, Wings IFR 1, I guess I should say, and you aren't given the departure heading, you are responsible for flying that uh, that departure. And I'll show you, like we showed you the depiction. Yeah, this is really gusty, guys. Gear up. Uh, we, did a, we actually did a flap zero, and normally I do uh, flaps one. Through uh, 400 feet, we'll go ahead and turn to that. 
24 and 40. And remember, we're going to 3,000. Right over the downtown, which that's kind of unusual for him to give us an instruction. That would take us right over the city. Now we're through 1,400 going to 3. Alright, 180 and we'll keep it at 2,000. 5 for Delta Victor. Number 5, sir, Tango Whiskey 9 in Austin. Tango Whiskey 9 in, ready for takeoff. Runway 3, 3 left. Alright, November 5, sir, Tango Whiskey 9, are you guys a group flight that you want to uh, do one at a time? We are going to go one at a time, but we'll be flying at the same exact flight point. Alright, November 5, sir, Tango Whiskey 9 in, uh, uh, so there's 180. Four guns, two, three. Christian 350, one four guns, two, three. Yeah. Say altitude. Altitude. Oh wait, that's what you told us to do, sir. We're trying to pass this uh, IFR flight. We're following your instructions. <laughs> so much hell would descend. No, it wouldn't. But I don't think we would pass IFR one. <laughs> Good thing I've already passed it. All right, so 23 and 34 now. Uh, so there's 180 and 2000. Let's get it trimmed down. This is very, very gusty. I'm going to be hard pressed to pull off two good landings in this Alpha, kind of a gusty uh, wind. Alpha Sierra, X Ray Golf Sierra, Alpha, we're in Boston, the virtual over in 33, left line of a wing. Is somebody literally flying with the Microsoft Flights in default call sign? <laughs> So if I can keep this thing steady at 2,000, a little, a little bit high actually. November 514 Delta Victor, flight heading 150. 150, 5 Delta Victor. Right, let's keep, keep to our assigned altitude. Stepped on each other. Tango Whiskey 9, flying uh, 240, maintain VFR in a low 2500. Flight heading 240, maintain uh, VFR at low uh, 500, altitude again, sorry. At or below 2500. At or below 2500, thank you, Tango Whiskey 9. November 514, Delta Victor, turn left heading 060. 060, 514 Delta Victor. So, kind of got my hands full. 2319! We have a 2319! <laughs> we got Kitty Monster here. Says the ground controller must be new, you know? Alpha, point Alpha, X-ray. You know I make wrong turns all the time. I just love the fact that, uh, Kenny, that he was like, he looked at your aircraft type and he was like, just you know, give way to that, uh, Aircraft over there. <laughs> that's that's the part that made me laugh. Windy, you're doing 50 knots over the ground. Hey, firm, I'm flying my approach speed. 
That's crazy. It's windy. Got a heck of a crab, too. <laughs> Delta Victor, turn left at 360, the localizer. At 360, join the localizer, 54 Delta Victor, and can confirm on the winds. At uh, 2000 to establish and clear for 3 3 left ILS approach 5 for Delta Victory. If I will follow Delta Victory, you're following a TBM on a 3 mile final wind 35014, gust 2 3, runway 3 3 left, clear land. Clear land number 2, 5 and 4 Delta Victory. American 910, descend and maintain 3000. Yeah, let's make sure I get that tuned in 110.7 and 330. Take a whiskey and be a firm altitude description, proceed on course. Take a whiskey and be a firm altitude description. Uh, proceed on course, and it is Don't windy for sure. Leave that traffic right, up here. You guys are not flight following, is that correct? Uh, negative on flight following, we don't need it today, thank you. Roger, thank you. Alright, unless we're slipping below our assigned altitude, 2,000 until established, okay. And looks like we're coming into the... Coming to the glide slope just a touch early before we get the localizer, so... Start descending, and it looks like we're kind of coming into that localizer now. Runway's in the side up ahead. Start pulling speed down. I can get the fuel pumps back on. I think the uh, cows are. Yeah, cows should be in trail at this point, but that's Call fine. I don't really see that traffic ahead. But let's let's <laughs> say again, say again, say again, say again, doctor, doctor. I don't see that traffic ahead, but let's listen for a GA aircraft give being given uh, turn off and taxi instructions. Start spinning the props up to, uh, you guys can start putting in those landing rate predictions in. We're going to get the speed under control. We're a little high. Get some power out and start getting flaps in. Go flaps one under 120. Speed drops down to 100. We'll get the gear in. Okay, it looks like we're back on descent profile now. Gear and flaps too. So that aircraft has been given to turn off. Okay, I kind of do see him about two thirds of the way up the runway now. Flaps three coming in. Try and get down to flaps four, down to 80 knots, and then 70 to five one final, 70 over the numbers. So we're kind of getting speed under control at the last minute here. And it looks like I need to start. You did it level two before you checked in, right? Start lowering that wing. I'm on a diesel two, and you give me a 33 left. Perfect, thank you. Three zero zero to join the localizer, American 
Slam, slam down by a wind gust here, by guys, but I'll try and keep it as gentle as I can. Oh, goodness. How did I manage that? <laughs> Ooh, that was work, guys. Uh, looks like we're off at Mike. I'm sorry, Quebec. Can't tell if we're off at Foxtrot or Quebec. If it was the one before the crossing, it's Foxtrot. If it's the one after, it's Quebec. Let's see. Let's see. Alright, Grab Point Niner, 514 Delta Victor, thanks. Okay, so it is Fox. Let's get kind of between the uh, old short lines here. Boston ground, Douglas 514, Delta Victor's off, 33 left, Fox trot short of 4 right. Cross 4 right, short of 4 left, 5 Delta Victor. All scheduled descent has joined us, it sounds like. Yeah, you missed it, man. I uh, kind of had my hands full there. Alright. Woo! There he goes, by the way. <laughs> Anti collision off. Landing lights off. Taxi light on. Pito heat off. Fuel pumps off. Alice can go open. Yeah, that was, uh. That was a fun one, man. Made it look like child's play, says Ori. I don't know about that, but... Got it down without breaking it. <laughs> we'll definitely be watching the replay on that. November 514 Delta Victor on Foxtrot. Cross front right 4 left to taxi to signature via Foxtrot Bravo. Alright, cross 4 left, Foxtrot Bravo to signature 514 Delta Victor, thanks. And on 514 Delta Victor, congratulations passing wings via uh, IFR1. Thank you. All right, so Foxtrot, right Bravo, and we'll take it all the way in. Hopefully be able to catch up with chat messages then once we... Uh... Now this thing is, it's, it, there's a, it's a really gusty wind down here, guys, today. So even on taxi, this thing is a handful don't know how well I'll catch up with the chat messages until we get this thing parked, but... Oh, I knew the tower looked familiar, but couldn't place it. Yeah, we're at, uh... We're at Boston. We... So we're doing the Wings Over New England training flights that are on the Boston Virtual ARTCC website. And uh, so the IFR-1 was kind of real basic introductory one. 
And the funny thing is, is the IFR1 kind of tests to make sure that you are, you know, you comply with the, the headings that are published on the Logan 9, or the Logan 2, rather. I keep saying Logan 9. I guess the last time I did all these, they were on revision 9. They've since wrapped around back to uh, revision 2. Um, but then they then they issued us a, a heading on departure that kind of overrode that stuff anyway. <laughs> But any of you guys who do fly this, and you fly that Logan 2 departure, or whatever revision they end up on by the time you do it, just keep in mind that you do need to start that turn promptly at the DME marker on that departure. Because these guys here, the, the, the Boston controllers, as they're grading you onto whether you're passing or not passing that flight, they are looking to see, like, when do you start that turn? So you gotta make sure you're right on the mark with that. If you start it er early, then you're flying over noise sensitive area, or if you're flying, if you make the turn late, you're flying over noise sensitive area. So they do check to make sure that you've made that turn at the DME that you're supposed to. So if you're supposed to start that turn at four DME, you know, make sure you're watching that and uh, and do so accordingly. If you started at three, or if you started at five, they they may not pass you. Jetblue five ninety two on Charlie, cross runway four right, hold short runway two seven on Charlie. Uh, entering the ramp area, we can go ahead and get the taxi light off. All kinds of stuff on the stream to catch up on. We'll catch up on the chat messages. We'll see what happened with the predictions. I know I've got some raffle ticket redemptions to uh, put in for you, and we'll talk about that for those of you new to the stream. Alright, parking brake is on. Taxi light already came off. Let me run through the shutdown checklist really quick, guys. And we can go back to being locked. We'll get the squawk code back to 1200 and uh, shut the transponder off. We'll go ahead and get the uh, engines cut, mix, magnetos, and generators. Seatbelt signs can come Touch off. Aircraft on Boston ground. Boston ground is now closed. Contact. Departure 133.0. Doors are now open. We can uh, reset the. Oh, did, did I get the. Oh, yeah, the beacon light's still on. Anti collision is off, though. Okay, good. We'll reset the trim. And no need to check fuel and ETA. All levers now down. Radio master and inverter off. Smoking beacon and nav. Fuel tanks off and off. Cows can go closed. Master battery switch. And we'll close up the doors. There we go, guys. DC3 is uh, back to uh, parked. And uh, let's pop back in and see how the predictions went. Well, actually, yeah, we were so... Or said they were taking us around the block. Actually, it didn't look like it was that bad, a, uh, a vector around for that. Now, see, that, that, that little um, uvula there was our, our was our downwind and final... We were originally flying a downwind to 3-3 left, which is the one we landed on the second time, and then all of a sudden he said 3-2, so we had to kind of make it a real tight downwind and, a, a, you know, almost a immediate turn to uh, base and final there so that worked out okay and uh, the departure yeah it really wasn't that uh, that bad of a vector around got us out and right back in for the ILS so uh, yeah not too bad at all a little, little tour of the uh, immediate uh, mouth of the Boston Harbor yeah so we got predictions for 126, 95, 173, said Kenny. Uh, controller says, uh, yeah, controller balance at 50, 152 from Melvin. And, uh, yeah, man, I was, uh, I was happy with that. 
Kenny said, I landed at 53, but bounced like a rock skimming across the pond, so it didn't count. Yeah, I was kind of shocked that I did as well as that. Uh, kind of, probably a fluke. But, uh, yeah, Ori says, I'm going to have to start doing these training flights. I really need the training. Well, um, they are, like I said, they're a great way not only to get kind of a, a, a primer on the basics of VFR procedure and IFR procedure, but again, if you follow them in sequence, you get a nice tour. They, they connect with one another, so if the last one ended at Boston, the next one starts at Boston, and so forth. So if you, if you do them in sequence, you get a nice tour of the, of the Boston Virtual ARTCC's airspace as well. Very cool. All right, uh, and thank you guys um, for, for stopping in. Those of you who checked in late, and yeah, off-schedule all, all descent, we appreciate you. Uh, off-schedule, could I handle these training missions? He says, absolutely. I think some of them would be much more basic than what you would want or need to do. Uh, I mean, like, VFR-1 is literally flying three patterns. Um, IFR-1, which is the one we just did, was the departure verse on the Logan 9, or Logan, I keep saying the Logan 9, departure on the Logan 2, and then an ILS approach. So it's, you know, again, they start with real basic stuff, and then they add more and more on afterwards. <laughs> it sounds like they stayed open for you. They're kind of shutting them, shutting them down now, yeah. <laughs> Alpha carries some, some pull in Boston. Well, I think they'd also know that I'm streaming these flights. So, uh, you know, and, and I'm posting them on their website for examples for others. So I think it was kind of uh, both uh, both gracious and self-serving of them to, to stay on. And, and I'm glad that they did. All right. Let's, uh, let's do a couple of little housekeeping things. I know that a few of you are owed raffle tickets. We do a monthly raffle on this channel. Yeah, Willow, the Douglas DC-3. We did. We were going to do it in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 with the, uh, the Mooney Ovation, and man, things just didn't work out on that. So we wound up doing it in the, uh, in the DC-3 here. But uh, let's let's catch up with the raffle tickets. Redneck at 6. Let me get those in. Get OBFG2 gets one, and Commander Gawainian gets one. Commander Gawainian, thanks for stopping back in here. OBFG2 one. Let me spell that right. CMDR. How do you do that? CMDR. I would think we got it. Yeah, so, yeah, so off schedule, you were being facetious. Yeah, I got you, man. I mean, there's yeah, four day for me now. Get six. Okay. We'll talk about that monthly raffle. Um, yeah, they're real basic. Real basic things. Um, the only thing that might throw you off a little bit uh, off schedule, I don't know how much flying on VATSIM you do, but th there's obviously a difference uh, in you know, kind of who you talk to and when in the real world versus, uh, versus here. So it's, uh, oh, I missed the spelling. Okay. I'll fix that. Let's, um, okay. Yep. Let's go ahead and get that now. Ticks. CMDR. GAW. Oh, okay. AIN. AIN. I gotcha. Good. Uh, Ori Darkwind, you can actually go exclamation point uh, T-I-X and it'll, it'll tell you for sure. Uh, and then uh, Gawaini and I can... Okay, I can delete out those erroneous ones there, or the own erroneous one. Actually, or I can tell you, I, it looks like you got one in, Ori. Alright, very good. So those of you new to the channel, we do a monthly raffle drawing where you can cash in those points at the bottom of your chat panel there, the alphabets points, and uh, if you cash them in a thousand at a time, you get one entry into the drawing. If you cash them in five thousand at a time, you get six entries into the drawing. We're going to make the, we do it at the, we do the drawing at the end of each month, 
So we're going to do the next one at the end of March. We're going to actually be on the Cherry Blossom Controlling Stream on Sunday the 28th. So we'll be off of our normal schedule when we do the raffle drawing. You don't have to be present to win, though. Um, just need to contact me within a week once I let you know that you're the winner. But, uh, yeah, so on March 28th, we'll be controlling for Washington ARTCC's Cherry Blossom Fly-In, and we'll be on BWI Tower unless that changes. But uh, that's when, uh, towards the end of that stream, is when we'll go ahead and pull that uh, that's the ticket out of the fishbowl. If you are, are the winner, you're, it's your choice whether you would like a uh, Slant Alpha t-shirt in a variety of sizes. If you want a Slant Alpha cap, a mouse pad, or a coffee mug. Here's the mouse pad here, by the way. Uh, this is mine, but I got I got one that I haven't been using for months. That would be yours. Uh, we got the coffee mug that's hanging up on the window out there. And then if you don't want any of my crap, that's fine. You won't hurt my feelings in the least if you would rather have a $25 Amazon card, gift card, or a $25 X-Play.org gift card. So if you're the one we pull out of that fishbowl, uh, those are your prize choices. And you can, uh, you can let me know which one you like. Uh, that's, that's all schedule says I try that sim every time I do P3D. The problem is the controllers know who I am and they log off shortly after I get my clearance. Uh, sometimes <laughs> the t-shirts are fabulous, he says. Thank you. I'm glad that you, uh, glad that you enjoy yours. Quite a few of you have been very, I'm, tr I'm still working on getting like a, a proper merch store set up online, but that hasn't come about yet. I'm still working on it, but I'm, I'm flattered and honored that you guys are, uh, that you guys are tickled about those shirts as you are. Uh, before we look at the replay, let's talk real quick about the stuff that's coming up on the show schedule. So today was the 15th. Okay, so this Friday, and we normally fly Mondays and Fridays at uh, five, the 8 p.m. Eastern time, which is midnight Zulu time now that we're in daylight savings. So uh, Monday and Friday, 8 p.m., which is Tuesday and Saturday at Midnight Zulu. This Friday, we're going to do a spring break beach getaway, flying the working title CJ4 mod for Flight Sim 2020, if the sim works by Friday. We'll fly that CJ4 mod from uh, Martin State, my home airport. We'll fly it down to Hilton Head and then down to uh, Key West. That'll be on Friday the 8th. On Monday the 22nd, week from tonight, we're going to be back into this very same Douglas DC-3, resuming our Douglas Overseas series. We last landed at, uh, at where did we land? Sardinia? Yeah, so we're flying from there from Sardinia to Sicily and then on to Malta. And uh, we're coming up the one-year anniversary of starting that thing. So uh, yeah, almost a year in now to that tour that started at uh, that same home airport, Martin State. We've flown a series of hops into uh, up and over the North Atlantic, into Eastern Canada, and then Greenland, Iceland, Faroe Islands, down through the UK, and now we're doing our Mediterranean island hop portion of that tour. Oh yeah, it's right, and uh, all schedule reminds me, we've got to do, and I moved it to the other drawer here so I can actually show it, the beautiful um, Air Force edition of the E6B, the nice... Uh, the nice metal edition rather than the cardboard ones that you get that's got uh, the wind correction and uh, you know fix to fix navigation type you know uh, type computing power here in the uh, this beautiful E6B that was a gift from uh, all scheduled descent so yeah absolutely we'll be putting a uh, putting a, a schedule together uh, all scheduled I'll get with you to find out when a when a good night to do that would be we'll, we'll throw that onto the schedule uh, those are the next two. If you want to see, it looks like we have a friend who uh, happens to be watching our stream. So, uh, yeah, hello to whoever you are. Um, if you want to sh see the uh, full show schedule, or if you want to know what's coming up in the short term, follow us on Twitter or Facebook. We're slant off of both of those. Full show schedule is posted also on our Facebook page. It's also down below on the About tab and over on our Discord server where you can join that chat 24-7. We talked about the tutorials over on the YouTube channel. You can check those out. And then all of our old flight broadcasts are over there as well. Okay, I think this helicopter's had enough fun. Let's go ahead and disconnect from X-Pilot and uh, check out our replay. And watch this landing back, guys. I was really happy with it. Sitting here for a little while, so we got to wind it back a ways. All right, let's check it out. Can we check it out from... We want to check it out from. Yeah, a little bit of a stream sniper there, but he was he, it was harmless. I'm not too worried about it. The 
there we are. Look at that right wing lowered down. Wind coming from the right. Of course, it was kind of coming from every direction. <laughs> you can see we were kind of slipping it in through that crosswind the entire way down. But yeah, it was gusting and bouncing the entire way. Didn't see the landing rate. It was uh, it was in the 50s, I think. Or was it in the, was it like in the 50s or 20s even? It was nice and smooth. And we kept yeah we kept kind of getting gusted and pushed off to the side, and we had to kind of keep slipping it that back to the right. 28 was the winning number, says Balin. Yeah, so I basically, I kind of just stabilized it down the center line as best as I could. Just got it to the point where I knew we were just barely over the pavement. And just slowly rolled the power out. Yeah, it worked out pretty well. The center line adherence wasn't perfect. But uh, given the strength of that crosswind, I'm not going to begrudge myself that in the least. Let's look at it one more time. Look at it from the, uh, the flyover view. Yeah, worked, that worked out just way better than I expected it would. Yeah, look at that. Look at that crab angle. <laughs> yeah, so I, I kept getting pushed to the right, or left rather, so I had to kind of slip it back down into the right. And then it got to the point where I knew we would just feed above the pavement and just rolled it on there. Oof. <laughs> yeah, so the, really the, the wing should have been lower so that it would have been tracking a little bit better down center line. But because it was so bouncy and gusty, really didn't. That. And then the yoke goes back to, the yoke goes back to stick that, ta uh, that, um, that tailwheel into the pavement. Yeah, and all schedule brings up a good point. It says, um, outside of the sim world, the landing rate doesn't really make a difference. Especially in a, in a gusty wind like this, you almost want to set it down more firmly. Yeah, if you got, yeah, and he, he brings up uh, some other examples. If it's short runway, if there's standing water, VREF minus five, center line, and in the first 1,500 feet. Greaser's nice, but it's not at the expense of the other things. Yeah, we've and we mentioned that occasionally on stream, but uh, cer certainly bears repeating for you know, the, those that are new. Um, so, yeah, sometimes, and especially like 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 he points out in, in a slippery um, in a slippery condition with crosswinds, you want to transfer the weight from the wings to the wheels uh, expediently to prevent uh, the, the plane from skidding sideways. Those things don't win me slant alpha merch, says Controller Balan, right? <laughs> no, but it's definitely worth pointing out. And again, I'm definitely a sim pilot. I'm definitely not a real world pilot. Uh, we do try to do things as realistically as possible here, but there's certain liberties that we always do take. And uh, it's always good to kind of point out what those key differences are between the sim world and the real world when we can. All right, guys. Well, very good. Thanks again for being here. Um, we will see you Friday uh, as we make our spring break flight down from, uh, we'll start it from Martin State just outside of Baltimore. Uh, in the meantime, we may, may, may get to pop in on Wednesday and do a little air traffic control, but... Uh, other than that, we will plan to see you Friday from Martin State Airport in Baltimore. In the meantime, do be safe in your own travels and your own adventures. And uh, stay healthy, guys, and we will talk to you soon. I wanted to check in one more time. So first of all, uh, thank you very much uh, right there at the end for from uh, RoboProd Aviation for that follow. The other thing that I wanted to check in and see, who do we have that we can throw the stream over to? Is he actually still streaming? That is crazy. Well, he can't be, can't be on center. He's kind of closed up shop, I think. Digital Engineer is doing some Grand Theft Auto, seriously? 
right, who do we got that we can send the uh, stream over there? Flies787, I think, is on. Let's see if he's still flying. Oh, he's on the ground. So I don't know if he's still going to be on for a little bit. Let's see who else we got. We got Studio Canuck, and he's on the ground also. And again, I can't tell if they're at the beginning or the end of their stream. So I'm trying to find somebody who's still on. Well, Sheet is still on Boston Center. I don't know if he's wrapping up. He normally is uh, done by about now. But we'll kick the love his way. You guys can watch the uh, very end of Mr. Uh, Mr. Sheet's stream as he probably is in the process of wrapping up. And then you guys can end up with whoever he sends the raid to. So uh, tell Sheet I said hello. And, uh, oh, Aviator1996. All right, we'll check that one out. Oh, we're in the CRJ on Pilot Edge. Excellent. Okay, and we're definitely still in the air. Good. Okay, so we'll send uh, our stream viewers over to Mr. Aviator1996 in the CRJ on Pilot Edge. Uh, tell him that Slant Alpha says hello. Give him some Slant Alpha love. If you guys have those, uh, if you're subscribed and you have those icons, please, uh, please send some of them his way as we transfer all of you over to him. All right, stay tuned, guys. Thanks again, and we'll see you Friday from Baltimore. Take care.